Oh. Another interesting item on the side of the RCF, how about right behind the rear wheel arch, there's this little plastic thing. Lexus had to install that because the tires stick out just barely beyond the fenders and that's not allowed by government regulation. So all RCF models have this weird little plastic piece on the wheel arch. Meanwhile, around back, there are a couple of interesting quirks to the RCFs. As for the brake lights, one of the things that I've been told by Lexus people is they form an L on that side of the car to stand for Lexus and to roughly mimic the L badge that Lexus has. Now that makes sense to me, except there's a bit of a problem. What about the brake lights on the other side, which seem to form a J? I don't really know how to explain that, and I'm not really sure if Lexus knows how to also. Other interesting things, the back of the RCF, this car has quad exhausts and not little fake quad exhaust like some performance cars now, true quad exhaust that come out exactly where Lexus says they do. So you got a naturally aspirated V8 and quad exhaust. You think this thing is gonna sound pretty good. Well, take a listen. In the end, it sounds okay, but not as aggressive as you might expect. Another thing I find interesting in the back of the RCF is the rear wing. Now, so many German performance cars of this price point in this class have these adjustable rear wings that go way up and really accentuate the fact that they're high performance cars. In the RCF, here's what the wing looks like in the down position, and then here's what the wing looks like in the up position. It goes up like an inch. I don't think it actually provides any sort of functional downforce, and it also really doesn't help your style all that much to show off to people that you got a cool rear wing. Now, for a couple of other interesting RCF-related items around back, we have to open the trunk. Now, with the trunk open, it's a fairly normal sized trunk, about what I'd expect for a vehicle in this class. There are a couple of interesting things about the trunk, though, one of which is this little net. Now, this net isn't a cargo divider to keep your stuff from rolling around and sort of separate it in the back. Instead, it's actually like a little net bag where you can put the stuff that you don't want to roll around. Interestingly, this little net bag is Lexus branded. Also interesting is the trunk pass-through. Now, if you're taking this car, for example, skiing, and for whatever reason you can't mount skis on a ski rack, on top. Maybe you'll want the skis to stick all the way through the car, so there is a little pass-through in the back seats for you to be able to do that. This is not particularly unusual. A lot of cars have this, but the unusual thing is that Lexus, in true Toyota and Lexus cautious spirit, there's like an enormous warning label stuck on the back of that thing inside the trunk that is absolutely impossible to read it. The gist, I guess, is that basically you're supposed to pull it up in the trunk and maybe pull it in the back seat, and eventually you get it open and you can stick your ski in the car, which will, of course, then impale you if you get in an accident. Good luck. Lexus is not liable. Next up, it's time to move inside and discuss the obvious, and that would be the RC's rear seats. Yes, this car has rear seats for reasons completely unknown to me. People won't buy coupes unless they think they can carry someone in back, even though they never do. And now I'm going to try to get in back. The first step is move the seat forward. You pull a little latch on the back of the seat. It moves forward, and then... Oh... <laughs> and now I'm in the back of the RC. Now, it's incredibly tight back here. If I were to put the seat back, it would whir back into place. There wouldn't be enough room for my legs, and then I would be crushed to death. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm gonna tell you that I think these rear seats weren't really designed for human use, and Lexus just figured, and eh, nobody's gonna use them. So they left a couple of interesting things back here, one of which is a speaker. There's a speaker in the back, but it's sort of mounted randomly right in the middle of the panel to the left of the rear seat occupants. 